now we're in chapter five. And chapter five is something called elasticity. Now, while we already know, or at least you should know, uh, that the demand curve is downward sloping and that there's a general relationship of price to quantity demand, what elasticity helps us to do is to calculate the exact responsiveness of consumers to a change in price. And we can also do this for producers to a change in price, um, impact on income, impact on the price of other goods. But here I'm just going to be focusing on, this is going to be two videos, focusing on the calculation of elasticity. And there's basically three different ways to figure out elasticity or infer elasticity. And we're going to go, I'm going to go over the first two t um, in this little video. This first method is called percentage, and it's really, shall we say, the theoretical or behavioral impact of consumer responsiveness to a change in price. So here's the general formula, percentage change in quantity demand over the percentage change in price. Now to calculate the percentage, it's always going to be the change over the base from where it is you're starting from. So let's say that we are um, we are doing a change from A to B, and that would be going from a price a price has dropped from five dollars to three dollars, and the quantity goes from eight to ten. If we were to do the percentage change in quantity demand, it's going to be starting from this point. It's going to be two over eight over 2 over 5. But the big thing is, let's calculate this, this number right here. So um, when you have a fraction over a fraction, you can easily convert that to something easy, um, like this, 2 over 8 times 5 over 2. You multiply by the reciprocal take that out, and this becomes 5 eighths. And when you have 5 eighths like that, as you'll, as you'll learn later, this 5 eighths is actually below 1, and it's inelastic. Now that's all well and good as we're going from A to B, but what about the other way, changing the, um, uh, increasing the price from 3 to 5, so from B to A. So if we do that, Percentage change in quantity demanded, this is going to be the same, 2 over 8. But now we have got change over the base, 2 over 3. And this is going to be 2 eighths times 3 halves. Cancel, cancel. Now we've got 3 eighths. The numbers are different, 5 eighths to 3 eighths, even though we have the same uh, actual change that is going on. And this is not really uh, reflective and does, doesn't really tell us anything, uh, anything interesting. Uh, and there needs to be a way to convert these changes so that we get the same change, whether it is an increase or decrease in the price. And the way to do that is something called the midpoint method. Now your book has a kind of a complicated way of, of doing the midpoint method with regard to Q1 and Q2. I always like to make it simple and consider the change over the midpoint. The midpoint is the middle point between the range. In this case, the midpoint is four and the midpoint is nine. So now we have the change in quantity demand. This would be two over nine. 2 over the midpoint there, and here it would be the change in price, 2 over 4, or 1 half. 2 ninths times 4 over 2, we have 4 ninths. And this number will be the same whether you have an increase or a decrease in the price. 
And so generally, when you're given problems, to calculate it, if you know all four numbers, the first and second price and the first and second quantity, you will undoubtedly have to calculate the midpoint method. And whenever I give test questions, I will say calculate the elasticity using the, the midpoint method. So definitely know this formula right here. All right, that ends our, our first section for elasticity. In our next section, I'll go over something called total revenue method.